My name is Abby Ferris and I am a program development associate here with the Black Teaching Exchange or BTE. And I'm so excited because today we are launching our first artist Q&A, which we hope will be the first of many in our artist spotlight series on the BTE blog. And today I get to interview a very dear friend of mine, Sarah Almana, who is an artist in Sudan. So thank you so much for joining us today, Sarah. Thank you so much, Abby, for having me. Um, and so you're so welcome. I know I am just really eager to dive into your story and to learn more about Sudanese culture. And I'm sure our audience will be too. Um, so with that, are you ready to get started? Yes, I'm very ready. <laughs> okay. Um, so first off, Sarah, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so my name is Sarah Manna. Uh, I'm a Sudanese artist living in Khartoum, Sudan. Uh, I'm 28 years old. Um, I'm an anesthesia specialist. Uh, working in a private hospital. I'm also studying medicine. I'm in my third year. Uh, I'm also a volunteer with a local uh, young initiative uh, called uh, Yelam Badr. Um, I, I am uh, an English club mentor uh, for my own English club uh, that I started in uh, late 2016. Um, I'm also a business owner. I create my own paintings and I sell them online. Um, two things uh, I love the most is uh, watching movies and art, uh, doing art, like uh, painting and drawing and everything. Yeah. You have, yeah, you do so many things. It's, it's like really amazing. So many interests and, and you're so active in the community in Khartoum, I know. Um, could you just tell us a little bit about your interest in medicine? Uh, so I started, um, I had this idea of uh, starting medicine in 2018. Um, and and there there was um, a specific reason um, at the time, but then I I thought about what I'm going to do with my MD after I graduate. Uh, so I've worked um, I've graduated with my first bachelor's degree in anesthesiology in 2014. So I've worked in many uh, hospitals here in Khartoum, uh, and the only thing in common that I noticed about all the health facilities um, uh, I've worked uh, uh, with is that they don't have uh, a proper health system. Like the facilities are very um, um, underdeveloped, if I can say. The equipment is very um, out of date. Um, even the practice is not very um, well managed. So I think uh, by studying medicine, it will um, open doors for me to just um, uh, seek um, ways to, to help improving uh, our health system. So I hope after I, I finish medicine and I uh, graduate, inshallah, in, in, in a few years, I will seek a postgraduate degree in public health. It will definitely help me to understand to better understand uh, the, the health system here in Sudan, to uh, identify the different uh, uh, problems that we have in our system, and to help um, find solutions to, to, to solve these problems. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, it's so inspiring. Um, I know you're really committed to, to serving and making things better, um, and you're very passionate about your community there, which I know we're going to get into more. Um, so the next question is, can you tell us about your interest in art? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I started uh, drawing even before I got to school. I was obsessed with certain uh, cartoon characters. Uh, so over the years, uh, I improved my skills 
and uh, I started expressing myself through art. Um, recently, most recently, I've uh, uh, turned into art um, to not only to express myself, but also as an escape mechanism uh, from uh, the pressure I have from work, from school, from uh, the general situation here in Sudan. Um, so uh, I think art is, is, is um, a way in order to, um, to escape reality. And most recently, I made it uh, a source of income. I, so in July, I started uh, ha having these ideas. Why won't I um, share my, my, my art with, uh, with everyone? And of course, uh, through social media and different social media platforms. And uh, I was very lucky to, um, to share my, my art pieces with, uh, with people and they loved it and they started uh, buying it from me and uh, I just think I'm very lucky because I'm now um, doing the thing I love and at the same time uh, it's it's a sort of a source of income for me yeah I'm I'm so glad you are also sharing your artwork with the world now um, and just Congratulations on all of the success you've had so far. Um, I know there's going to be more to come. Um, and so can you tell us in your eyes, um, what, what do you think Sudanese art is? Okay, so Sudanese art, uh, in my opinion, is an expression of our reality. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, Sudan is a very diverse country. We have countless uh, ethnic groups. Uh, they have their own uh, cultural uh, backgrounds. Uh, so um, the, the art I see now uh, in Sudan is just an expression of our culture in addition to our reality. And the political situation is very, um, like people thinking about the political situation here in Sudan, especially after the 2019 uh, revolution that uh, removed Umar al-Bashir, uh, Umar al-Bashir, who ruled uh, for over than 30 years. So, um, uh, yeah, I think I think the Sudanese art is an expression of our hopes, of course. Uh, of what we want uh, from the transitional government uh, uh, now, especially that the country is facing a lot of crisis, like uh, the COVID-19 this year, we have um, uh, the floods uh, that made uh, thousands of people uh, homeless, um, the medication crisis uh, and, and so on. Uh, so especially the Sudanese art uh, artists, uh, they are trying to portray uh, their concerns about uh, what's going on uh, uh, in the country and what they want to achieve uh, during this time and, and after it, and maybe to make things uh, get better. So uh, one, one of the most beautiful things during the revolution uh, was the street art. Uh, people, uh, or, or Sudanese artists were drawing um, all sorts of artwork that uh, carried uh, a specific message that we had enough from the past regime that we wanted to um, to to create um, a new reality to have our um, uh, our country move forward. And not just staying in the in the same place for, for over than thirty years. So, um, and of course, um, we were faced with a lot of bullets during uh, the, the the last revolution, and people died in the streets. So uh, the 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 art the street arts were very uh, expressive about 
um, uh, the, the, the people and how they want a peaceful transition of, of uh, uh, gover government to the civilians. So I think Sudanese art is just uh, expressing what we think about our reality. That's, that's such a, I love that. That's such a great way to put it. And yeah, I feel like um, in the last couple of years, it seems like Sudanese art or especially street art has been such a powerful way for people to tell their stories um, and to address these, these socio-political issues that, that deserve our attention. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know we'll talk more about that as well. So, um, yeah. so Sarah, can you just tell us about Sudanese culture or more specifically um, some traditions that you think are most interesting or are most interesting to share with us here in the US? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. So um, when, when I think about the Sudanese culture, I always, uh, think about diversity. Like we have a very, um, as I mentioned, uh, very diverse uh, ethnic uh, groups across the country. So the people uh, who live uh, uh, in the North have completely different culture, cultural um, uh, experience than the people who live in the West or in the Middle or in the South. So, um, I think uh, the culture in Sudan, in Sudan is um, uh, is one of the most beautiful things in my in my in my opinion because uh, one day if I had the chance I would love to just travel all around the country to uh, to come across the different lifestyle because here in, in Khartoum we have this very modern uh, global life uh, style. And uh, once we set um, um, foot outside of the capital, it's a completely different uh, life. So yeah, this, this is what, what I think uh, the, the culture of Sudan uh, really is. Um, a specific tradition I would love to share with you is the Jirtik. So Jirtik is um, uh, a ceremony uh, held after the wedding ceremony, the main, the main uh, wedding ceremony. So uh, of course in the wedding, uh, the, the bride uh, just wears a white dress um, and she carries um, uh, flowers uh, and there's a slow dance for, for, for the groom, the uh, bride. So, and everything like there's a, a party, but after that uh, comes the jirtik, where the uh, the husband and the wife wears traditional clothes. Uh, the the bride uh, just wear just wears um, a, a red a bright red Sudanese tote uh, with a lot of gold accessories. Of course, it's real gold. Some of the people uh, wear uh, real gold. Some uh, do not. They come uh, through the doors and there's a specific, um, uh, I can say, uh, steps they, they have to do in order to just uh, finish uh, the whole uh, ceremony. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, very, it's, it's a very nice tradition. I hope that um, whoever listens to this interview, they just search Dirtik and they just enjoy uh, the bright and very beautiful um, uh, images of uh, the ceremony. What? So do the color, like does the color red symbolize anything? Uh, I think it's just some symbolize um, joy and um, um, how the, the, the two, the wife and the husband are going to uh, start their new lives uh, in, uh, in good health and uh, in good fortune. Cool, very cool. Yeah. Um, so I know you just touched a little bit on how 
how Sudan is such a diverse country and there are so many experiences to be found all throughout Sudan, depending on where you go. Um, and I was just wondering, what do you think are some of the most common misrepresentations of Sudan? For example, maybe a lot of us here in the US, maybe we don't know much about Sudan. And if we do think of Sudan, I'm not, I'm not sure we would think of it as a very um, culturally diverse country. Yeah, so I think um, one of the most common misrepresentation is that um, because we are uh, enlisted as a state sponsor of terror, we are terrorists. So I think this is um, a, a very common understanding uh, of uh, the people, not only in the US, but uh, across the globe. So uh, I just want to, uh, want uh, people to know that, of course, we're not terrorists. Uh, people should always uh, try to separate separate between governments and uh, the people living in, in a specific country. So um, just because uh, the past uh, regime did some um, bad, uh, very bad decisions uh, that um, made them uh, made the country uh, enlisted enlisted as a state sponsor of terrorism that the people of this country is going to be just, yeah, they, they're just terrorists. So we're very peaceful uh, people. Uh, we just want to uh, live a very peaceful uh, life. We just uh, don't want to be left behind as, as, uh, um, as a nation. We just want to join the global community to be, um, to be able to um, just um, use our resources in order to not only live uh, on aid, uh, on international aid, but just uh, to use what we have and in, in improve uh, the overall situation uh, around the country. Um, I think also one of the most common uh, misrepresentation is that the country is uh, in a continuous state of uh, civil war. So of course we had um, uh, in a specific uh, period of time uh, a very long uh, civil uh, war uh, with with the south, uh, the the people of the north, with the people of the south. Um, they were um, people who have specific uh, demands uh, from the past government. And uh, after the uh, the Omar al Bashir uh, was overthrown in 2019. Um, uh, the the, uh, the the reasons to to continue the civil wars here in Sudan uh, are now uh, um, gone. So I think yeah that that the, the country is the, all the country is in civil war is not a true fact a true uh, statement. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so I think this leads into the next question, which um, is, can you just tell us a little bit more about the relationship between the United States and Sudan? Yeah, sure. So um, I think um, uh, the relationship between uh, the US and Sudan started in 1956. Uh, the Sudan was uh, in joint custody between uh, Egypt and uh, the UK. Uh, so uh, from that time until 19, uh, 1993, uh, the relationship with the U our relationship with the US was very great. Um, a lot of humanitarian uh, aid were sent uh, to, uh, to my people uh, for, for different crises uh, throughout the years. And uh, of course, the U.S. was always a supportive uh, uh, of uh, a supporter of uh, the democratic uh, uh, governing of, of, of the country, uh, and, and that um, was very obvious uh, in, in 2019 after after um, the, revol the, the revolution erupted and uh, Omar al-Bashir uh, was uh, was removed. Uh, so. Unfortunately, um, the last regime made some very bad decisions um, that uh, the United States um, 
made a decision to to enlist us as an uh, as a state sponsor of there. Uh, so and of course after that the economic sanction that made uh, the whole situation the whole country uh, very deteriorating uh, so last week fortunately president trump made the decision to uh, remove us uh, from this list and um, of course it's it's great news for everyone because now um, we will not be um, globally distance as as before now we're going to have normal relationship with all the countries around the world uh, we will have the chance to use our resources um, in a proper way um, and that's the, what the people of sudan want before the gov before our government so i hope that yeah our relationship will uh, will get better with the us yeah so i think um just speaking as an American, I know, so Sarah and I have been friends for some time now, and I've learned a lot from her about the relationship between the US and Sudan. But as an American, I think before I met Sarah, I wasn't quite as aware of the power that our government has to can exert on other parts of the world. And so um, the fact that the United States had placed Sudan on this list of state sponsors of terrorism. It prevented the country um, from getting a lot of critical humanitarian aid, um, especially as, as the pandemic sort of took over in this last year. And so I know you just had the revolution. Um, you've been facing this economic crisis. Then you had the pandemic come on yeah. top of everything. Then you had the floods come. And so yeah. this has just been um, an incredibly challenging year for the people of Sudan. And now that we are removing you from this list, I know it, it opens up the doors um, for you to receive a lot of critical aid. But like you said, to just move forward and become a part of this global community in the way that the young people and the future generations want for Sudan. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm, um, I was really happy to hear this news and I just hope, yeah, I hope it's just the first step of many more to come um, for the situation to improve in Sudan. I um, hope so too. So my next question is, Sarah, uh, what are your thoughts on the Pan-Africanism movement? Okay, so, uh, I was introduced to the movement a couple of years ago, and uh, now uh, through the BTE program, I came uh, across it again. So I think um, to to find a movement that is uh, uh, that is aimed to just um, strengthen the bonds between uh, the different African descendant is just what we need right now. Um, I think. Um, the movement uh, gained uh, a lot of uh, uh, support globally, especially during uh, the, these last years. Um, and I think that uh, any effort to just uh, uh, shed a light on this movement is going to be uh, a great co contribution. So I think even, I hope even by uh, doing this uh, interview and sharing my story, it will be um, like an addition uh, to, to the goals and, and to, uh, to, to what this movement is trying to do. And I think by joining uh, and participating and being a part of the BTE program, I think um, it's just going to add a lot uh, to it. I think so too. I think we are so grateful to have you here and I know our teaching artists are, are going to love um, learning more about Sudan through you and I think yeah, this you. is a great step. Um, yeah. So what are your thoughts on US race relations regarding Black Americans right now, including Afro-Caribbean and Afro-Latinx individuals? Okay, so 
I know that um, the race issue has been um, a huge topic in the U.S. Uh, like for a very long time. Um, uh, to be honest, I've been uh, introduced to the race issue in America uh, through movies uh, mainly, and I was very interested to know and read about uh, the race issue uh, in America. And uh, I've been watching a lot of programs on YouTube. And you know, Abby, I very, uh, I'm very, um, uh, I just uh, find uh, Trevor Noah is one of the people who are who can portray or express what's going on in America in in a funny but a very true way. Uh, so. Yeah, I've been I've been reading a lot about about uh, the race issue in America, and um, I think there is a huge um, debate about whether President Trump is uh, uh, contributing how he is contributing to this issue in America, and there is a um, a very different a very different opinions between the Democrats and the Republicans uh, regarding uh, how the president is. Uh, uh, handling this issue uh, in America, uh, and of course, I've been um, watching uh, closely the Black Lives Matter Matters movement uh, that erupted uh, just recently after the tragic uh, death of George Floyd. So, I think um, that there are many people and and uh, uh, people who are trying to. Um, find solutions to this um, uh, problem in, in America. And uh, I just want to say that the race issue is not uh, just limited uh, to the US. Um, maybe people might find it very um, unusual, but here in Sudan, we also have uh, a, a race problem. Uh, the, the only difference um, in America, you have people, uh, why, white people who are uh, feeling superior to people of uh, color. Uh, but here in Sudan, we, um, we have this idea that people who have light uh, uh, skin tone are better than th those who have a dark skin tone. And if you ask anyone uh, who thinks that, why do you think you're better than, than, than your brother? They will say that because they are of Arab descendant. Mm. So anyone who, who thinks or uh, uh, thinks that they are of Arab descendant, then the, he is or she is better than those uh, of African descendant. So of course, the race issue here in Sudan has contributed to the unequal distribution of wealth throughout the country. So many of uh, the country's wealth is uh, centered here in Khartoum for the people who are mainly of Arab descendant, people who have a lighter skin tone. So of course, this led to a uh, civil war, um, uh, for, uh, first of all. And um, to be honest, people tried to uh, to solve this problem of race here in Sudan just recently. And it was mostly from people uh, who are my age, young people and younger people, uh, because we think that um, anything that is going to, to break our unity uh, is going to, to bring even more problems to, to the whole country. And even if we are not enlisted as uh, a state sponsor of uh, terrorism, or um, uh, we had uh, um, money from all over the world, but uh, if we didn't uh, end this issue, I believe this um, uh, very much. Uh, I don't think we're going to, to move on a step further. So I really hope that in the future, in the people of America, uh, try to find uh, solutions for for uh, this racism um, uh, issue, and they just find ways to uh, end all sorts uh, of discrimination. 
Thank you, Sarah. I think, as you just said, that, you know, you feel that anything that's going to break your unity is only going to bring more problems for everyone. And I think that's something that really resonates with us here in the U.S. as well. Um, yeah. And I share a lot of your sentiments and hope, hope we can start to, to move forward in a better way together. I um, so okay, so now the most exciting question for me, and yeah. maybe our audience, but for me, is do you have yeah. a piece of artwork you would like to share with us? Yeah, definitely. So uh, this artwork I've created recently, I'm going to show you. I hope it's very clear. Yes, I can see so, it as well, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've uh, painted uh, this art piece in order to show um, uh, the Sudanese people and their hopes toward uh, a better uh, future. So uh, this part here, of course, it represents the Sudanese people. I um, uh, painted them wearing our traditional clothes. So. This is a Sudanese man. He's wearing uh, the traditional jellabia. It's usually white, but it can uh, go with different colors. He also wears uh, this uh, imma. It's a very, very long um, piece of uh, cloth that is wrapped around uh, the man's head. So it also comes with different color. Uh, and he also wears this vest. It's a uh, very... Um, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, people in Sudan uh, wear it. Uh, it's usually um, black. Um, for the women, I uh, painted them we uh, wearing the traditional top. So it's um, usually very bright and it has a lot of uh, beautiful uh, printing. Uh, so, uh, and of course, I painted them with different skin tones, uh, just to show how uh, we have uh, different ethnicities, uh, cultural background, as I mentioned before that here in Sudan, we have a lot um, of uh, ethnic groups uh, living in different parts uh, in the, uh, of the country. So uh, this part and this sun, it represents uh, our hope. Uh, of uh, a better situation, um, it, either it was political or economical. So uh, it rises against uh, the very dark uh, clouds. Um, in this part, I drew, I painted uh, this part to just represent uh, the different resources we have in the country that we hope that we will not rely on uh, humanitarian aid no more. We just want uh, the chance to um, use our own resources in order to uh, move forward and create a better reality for us. So, yeah, this is this is my artwork. It's, it's stunning. Yeah, it's it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Abby. Thank you so much for sharing that, Sarah. It was my pleasure. And so we have just one more question for you. And yeah. that is, um, what can our audience here, especially in the United States, um, what can we do to bring more awareness to Sudanese culture? Um, okay, so uh, first of all, I hope that uh, they find uh, a reliable uh, news resources um, to read about uh, Sudan more and to read about uh, the Sudan-US relationship more and how, uh, how uh, is our politics uh, related to the US politics and uh, just um, explore our history and culture because um, I don't think we are uh, represented very well uh, in the international news. Um, uh, and, uh, and even if we are uh, uh, shown in, 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 in different uh, news platforms, we are usually misrepresented. 
so uh, another thing I want um, uh, the, the people, uh, whoever is watching this interview, to um, to learn about the different crises we have here in Sudan. So we have the floods, we have the medication crisis, uh, one of many of the most crucial medications um, um, are not found here in the country. So most people are asking uh, those who are living outside of Sudan to just send them uh, their medication. Um, uh, I also want uh, uh, to, to, to talk about um, an international aid, um, a local and international uh, aid organization. Um, maybe people can uh, look uh, look up uh, for 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 uh, uh, for some organization that they can donate to in order to solve some of our crises. Because as a country um, with a transitional government, we we want uh, all of the support, not not only from uh, the U.S. but uh, globally, until we uh, finish this. The transitional period and uh, move on to elections and um, have uh, 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 have better better situation in the future. So uh, then uh, maybe in the future people would uh, um, have Sudan in their list of uh, uh, the countries they want to visit because we have very uh, beautiful scenery across the country. And um, yeah, I think uh, people should uh, consider to come to Sudan. Uh, I also would love to uh, see uh, some uh, projects uh, to um, join uh, artists from Sudan and artists from uh, the US uh, to have uh, a collaboration and different artworks in order to show them in galleries uh, here in Sudan and maybe uh, in America as well. It will be a, a chance for cultural exchange, uh, which I, I think is going to be very interesting. And uh, at the end, um, I, would love, uh, I would love them to just follow my accounts in social media and maybe to follow my uh, art uh, work. Yes. Yeah, so, um... That's great, Sarah. So yeah, our artists here in the US, you can check out um, Sarah's artwork on her Instagram account, which is Sarah, S-A-R-A, -A, Drawing World. And I'm going to share that on the screen now um, with everyone. And I'm sure, I'm thinking we will probably also um, share a direct link to Sarah's Instagram account on the BTE blog as well. And we will probably um, share some other resources for artists to follow up on Sudan and all of Sarah's recommendations um, as well. So that's it. Sarah, I just want to say Thank you so much again for taking the time to talk with me today and to share your story. It was my pleasure. And um, on behalf of the Black Teaching Exchange Program, thank you to all the teaching artists out there for everything that you do. Um, please be sure to check back on the BTE website and blog for future artist Q and A's and also exciting new program developments. Um, and we just wish that everyone stays safe and takes care and you will hear more from us soon. Okay, so goodbye. Bye.